Hey friends. So I've been writing a book for over a year. That's wild. Let's talk about it. So I've been wanting to share an update on how it's going and what I've learned. So in this video, I'll be talking about a few stages of writing a book that I've gone through. Um, the first one being drafting, which is kind of like writing the first version of the book. Second one is about revisions and editing, and the third is publishing, which I haven't quite gotten to yet, but I've done a lot of sort of preparatory work on that. Um, so let's get right into it. So the first thing I would say is drafting is actually a lot of fun. Uh, I wasn't sure how hard it would be or how, you know, strenuous and grueling it would be because when people talk about writing a book they talk about how difficult it is and you know you should you should know what you're getting into and all of that and honestly if you have an idea for a book and it's kind of been like bugging you for a long time and you really feel like there's a lot or something there that you have to say or you have that sense even if you don't know exactly what it is but you just have had this recurring sort of desire i really think you should write it um, I, I really do. And I, and here's why. So if you go and spend that time to draft a version of it, any version of it, um, you might actually have a ton of fun. So I actually had a lot of fun doing it. It's probably the most fun I've had doing anything in, in quite a long time. Cause it's, it's this very sort of liberating kind of fun, flowing, creative, like exploratory process. Um, now, if you've never written a book before, then you don't know what's coming after. <laughs> it's like I didn't know, you know, that, so I'll talk about this. Revisions and editing is really hard. Um, and so what a lot of people think is, oh, well, you know, because it's really hard to edit and publish and market a book, you shouldn't do it at all. And I don't know, to me, that just doesn't make sense. I mean, I understand the argument, but I still think you should draft it anyway. And the reason is because then there's this big load, this burden that's within you that's being held right now and you'll just let it out. And you'll just feel so much lighter. You'll be like, I did it. You know what? Like whether you actually go and work on the editing and go and try and get it published or not, like who cares? Like, I mean, obviously you, you want to if you can. Um, but even that is actually an achievement. Now, I would go further and say, if you actually do that work and spend all that time drafting it, you're much more likely to want to get it published. So it's, you know, it's not like setting yourself up. Um, it's more like giving yourself an opportunity, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, when I look back on it, so I will say there's a couple of things that you can do to make the drafting feel more fun and free because it can be really intimidating to just sort of sit down on a blank page and be by yourself and expect to go and write it. Like, I think when a lot of people talk about, like, the Walden process um, of just go away, like, to a cabin or something and just, like, write a whole book, I don't know what that is. I have literally no idea what that process is. It probably works for some people. I mean, it's, it clearly works for some people. It works for a lot of people. Um, you know, being in nature, having inspiration, things like that. Um, for me, that's that's not at all how it went. It was basically I found this program called Writing in Community. It's Akimbo Writing in Community is the full name of it. It was a program started by Seth Godin. Um, and basically the way that the program is structured is you're in a group of people online. They're kind of all over. Um, and every single day you show up. And showing up means you come in and write some amount, you know, for that day. And you post it. And it kind of has this forum where you can post your work and then tag people in your group. And then they kind of look at it. They'll like it. Maybe give a good comment. That's it. And... The idea is just to show up every single day for six months and then publish a book by uh, uh, Amazon's Kindle program uh, at the end of it. And I did that. I mean, I did the six month program and I drafted the whole book and I didn't publish it at the end. I've gone on and 
kept working. I had attended another one, which I use for the editing, and I'm still editing actually. So uh, my journey is a little different, but you could, there's lots of people that do that where they just, in the six months, they actually write and publish a book. And these are people who have never written a book before. So I do actually, I, I really recommend this program. It, you know, you know, I think it's like 200 something bucks, which is obviously not nothing, but for me, the ability to just go in, share something, get a little feedback and move on and do this every single day and have that become a habit. I, I don't know where else. I mean, there's probably other programs that do something like this, but I definitely couldn't have written the book without it. Hands down. The other thing I like about it is there's no, I mean, they have calls, like you can do calls where you're showing up and, you know, sharing your work and then you can do read alouds and things like that. But it's mostly asynchronous, meaning you can just post it on the forum and leave. And I like that because then I can write on my own uh, time and schedule and I don't have to like conform to like a call where I have to, you know, like a lot of cohort based courses, you got to attend the live sessions or whatever it is. Um, this worked really well for me and I built a lot of rhythm. Definitely like broke the streak at some times, which is fine. It doesn't really matter. Um, the point is that you can do it. And I think even without this program, if you have, you know, a morning routine or an evening routine where you're able to just write, um, you know, three, four paragraphs, I mean, you'll get a lot done like in six months. Yeah. If, if you can write like a solid, solid three, four paragraphs that are actually like meaningful scenes that are pushing the book forward. You, you will get uh, quite a bit done and you'll learn a lot about uh, one of the things that I found really interesting about doing it in this sort of daily way is that because I was sharing these like four, let's say, you know, say four paragraphs, whatever, whatever the amount is, it's like 500 words, something like that. Um, I had this over time, this habit would develop where the beginning would kind of build up within that 500 words, it would sort of build up and leave a little suspense at the end because I was posting it and I knew someone would read just that bit. And as a result, the scenes throughout my story each had a little bit of tension and build up. Whereas otherwise I never would have done that because I would have just written the whole thing, you know, the whole short story all at once and never really thought about the middle. So, it's kind of neat because it gives you this opportunity to focus on each piece one at a time. And then every time you show up to write, you sit down at your desk, whatever, it's not that intimidating. You're like, eh, I don't really have to do that much. You know, I just, I kind of just kind of have to be here for whatever it takes you 45 minutes, an hour, two hours, whatever, whatever you feel you can, you can do, you know, and sometimes it's five minutes, sometimes, like sometimes you literally just can open your phone and look at it and be like, yeah, I actually have this idea. I'll try this next time. Send yourself a to-do. So, you know, I, I feel that this process of drafting a book is quite doable. Uh, if you have something to say and you have this idea that will at least lead you to explore. And I should also note, it's not like I had the whole book planned. It was, it was pretty much free flowing. In fact, when I first signed up for the program, I thought I was going to write a book, a nonfiction book about, um, you know, polymathic ideas. And I ended up going in this different direction where I'm writing a fictional book. Uh, book collection of fables. So, um, if you if you want a little more info about, you know, where I came up with this idea for this book, or there's a previous video I did where I talked about, you know, embarking on this journey of writing the book. You can check that out. It's linked uh, in the description. So after that program finished, I was done with drafting and it was under editing. And so this is a this is a part where a lot of people kind of struggle with. It mostly because you're trying to figure out like how do you edit if you've never edited before like how do you know what to do and certainly there's lots of books you can buy to become a good editor i mean the biggest challenge is you have to kind of separate yourself from the work and look at it with an objective lens and there's ways to learn how to do that so you know attending writing workshops i started to share my work like sharing some other short stories from the book inside writing workshops and these would be like short workshops like a few weeks with a group and then they would provide feedback and 
I would sort of learn like, okay, what are the parts of the story that are working? And, you know, I mean, you, if you're writing fiction, there's like millions of books to learn about good story writing. But really the key is like, can you read the story objectively and not, not from your sort of personal emotional view? Um, but honestly speaking, the real powerful thing that I did was get an editor. And I would just highly, highly recommend this, um, you know, regardless of whether you're self-publishing or not. We'll talk about publishing for a bit, but you really just honestly, you just need an editor. Like everyone needs, I, I just feel like everyone needs an editor. Um, and anyone who says they don't need an editor, like, I don't know. I mean, maybe you could, you can definitely write good stuff, but it's just like, it would take so much more work. And, and honestly, a lot of times we just can't see stuff ourselves. Just the same way you can't really know that much about yourself without relying on other people's lens of you, you know. Um, so, so then the question is like, okay, well, how do you find an editor? Like, honestly, half of this stuff that's difficult about all this, at least I find, is like, how do you pick? And it's like, well, if you can't pick, then you just don't want to do it because you're just going to have to go and find an editor. And it's like, oh, I picked the wrong editor. Um, the first thing I would say is I actually know of a lot of people that use multiple editors. Like they have one editor they use for the development. They call it developmental, meaning like the core structure of it and the narrative and things like that. And then they have other editors uh, that just do like line editing and proofreading to make sure like the grammar is good and things like that. So so that's one. The other thing is some people just have different editors even for developmental. And, you know, I've had through workshops, I've had some editors look at them and give feedback and they had a certain style. Um, I wrote a note on how I found my editor. My, my Mine is kind of like a sort of out of the ordinary approach where I'm writing a book of fables, which are short stories. And so I wanted someone who's not like just an editor of novels. Like I wanted them to know about short stories specifically. And so I found a, there's a journal um, which publishes short stories, which I like. And the publisher and editor of that journal offers like uh, an extended workshop on editing. And so I reached out to them. And, um, you know, thankfully they said yes. And I've been working with them and it's been amazing. I mean, you know, they've really helped me like see how to craft a great story through changes and tweaks in mind. So a couple of examples. So a lot of the stories that I would have, you know, they'd be a main character and they would be going through some stuff. And then there would be these other characters that would kind of appear and their interactions would serve some purpose and the story would move forward. But like, it wasn't really that clear, like why the other characters were doing that. And I was at least at first I was like, yeah, well, who cares? They're just side characters, but it, it just makes it much harder for the reader to believe. So I, I understood through this process, like the value of having character depth of other characters and having other side stories, things like that. But at the same time, you know, if you start adding all these different stories and all these, then it starts to get unwieldy and starts to expand. And then you have to figure out how to like trim it back down. Um, you know, you have to figure out like, okay, how do I have a good tension building narrative that has good sort of reward at the end for the reader? Um, but also isn't too formulaic. There's still some like random fun stuff here that gives it soul. These are difficult things, like super difficult. So that's why it's helpful to work with someone who knows what makes great stories they can kind of tell what you're trying to accomplish with your book. You know, I'm sure the same thing applies for a novel or, or a nonfiction book where you're, you're trying to share your story, but you know, there's, there's the problem of connecting with other people. So, um, yeah, there's, there's tons of stuff, uh, that an editor can help you with. And, and you know, the biggest one is like, sometimes you're just gonna have to kill stuff. That's like, they call it killing your darlings. Um, you have to learn how to do that. And um, I think that having rewritten some of the stories, like entirely, not almost, not entirely, but like almost entirely, I think that I feel much more powerful now as a story writer where I feel like, oh, I can like write a story and then <laughs> tear it apart and like, and make it a really 
great story, hopefully. Um, but at least one that I know resonates much more strongly, you know, and, and like I said, I'm in this community, so I work with the editor, but then I also share the results with other fellow writers and get feedback continuously. Um, you know, I know some folks that, or have read about at least, you know, this idea like, oh, you go and you write it and then you come back. I don't, I don't know. I don't recommend that. I think you should try and get feedback as much as possible on the way. Um, or at least if you're in concert with, in, in, in coordination with your editor, then that's probably fine. But I like, I like that people have been reading the book kind of throughout its life. Uh, I don't have to worry that like, oh, it'll be the first time someone reads it. That would be pretty scary um, to do. So I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> I would recommend having people get feedback and like writing workshops, writing communities are great for that. So that's kind of the main stuff around drafting and editing. That's where we're. That's where I'm at right now. I'm all I'm like probably about two thirds done revisions. Um, you know, and so timeline wise, it took me like six months to draft uh, about seven fables. They are like short stories around three or four thousand words. And in the editing I've been working on kind of on and off for more than six months, probably like seven, eight months now. But, you know, not like full, full time, like I was kind of shifted to work on other things for a while. But it, genuinely, this part is going to take a lot longer. Uh, it's much harder. In some cases, I've done like four rounds of revisions on them. But, you know, I really care about the stories being as good as they can be. It's, I think you can definitely make choices and trade-offs how far you want to go but I really want to give it my best shot. Um, and I think the thing that's worth knowing is like you, you can't really predict exactly how long it's going to take because it's a personal decision and creative decisions kind of have to be made along the way. Now, with all that said, um, once I'm done revisions, then I'm also, I'm also been doing some illustrations um, because, you know, <laughs> I just wanted to make it as hard as humanly possible <laughs> myself. But um, no, I mean, I really enjoy doing the illustrations too, and, and I'm going to do a big round of them when the revisions are done, and then I'll be on to publishing. So before I end this video, I want to talk a little bit about publishing. Um, I'm mostly going to talk about what I've researched and what I've kind of tentatively decided. Um, you know, probably the next video I do will be when I'm done all the revisions and when I've started, you know, doing the work of getting it published. Um, so yeah, so let's talk about publishing. Okay, so broadly speaking, there are kind of like three big categories of how you can get it published. Um, the first one is, you know, the traditional big five, they call it, or I guess now it's big four. There's like these four or five big companies that publish like 90 something percent of books. And they're the ones that, you know, all the big authors, you know, have had, they have contracts with them or, or their agents do. Um, and, you know, the main thing I would say on this is it's extremely difficult to get published by one of these publishers. It's all, like, now I think, I think the ma overwhelming majority, I don't know exactly what the numbers are, but most authors don't get published by the big, big part. And the more I've researched, I mean, I, I, I basically started researching it and I was like, well, you know, I mean, I, I have confidence and my writing's good and all that, but the reality is that in order to get published, it's not just about like, probability it's also like so timeline wise basically the way it's going to work is you would start querying so querying is this process where you pitch your book to um you know effectively agents and so this means that you first have to find an agent before you you don't even get to talk to the big five publishers <laughs> like like they're not going to listen to you they they don't care about they, they don't have time to listen to every author they only talk to uh, agents and so that means you have to pitch an agent to take you on as a, the, one of their authors and that's a big thing like so if if you're just publishing one book and you're not sure whether you really want to kind of keep writing more getting an agent's tricky because an agent wants 
somebody who is like a dedicated author or they want to be an author and someone who writes books that are marketable and ideally and for the big presses they have to be like essentially mass market appeal otherwise like why would they take it you know you have to think about it from their perspective it's kind of like they're similar to venture capitalists honestly they, they want to take like bets on things that can really pay off and um you know if that's something that's really a dream then yeah maybe it's worth querying like i know people they've queried hundreds and hundreds of agents for like you know years sometimes with their book and then finally they get a couple of asks to see the full manuscript or whatever and then and then once an agent picks you up if that actually happens then they sell the book to presses one of those are the big publishers and sometimes they don't get bought sometimes they do and then you get a contract with the big publisher and then maybe it has like a date if you get that then then that'll have a date of publishing a year out so it can be like a five-year timeline for after you finish finish completely finish writing and editing the book maybe more to get it published. I mean, it could be less, it could be two years, three years, I don't know. I mean, it really varies. Um, so you kind of have to decide like, is that really what you want? And so early on in my research, I was like, okay, I definitely don't want to do that. Um, <laughs> like, so, you know, I've been writing online and I have some level of audience, but I'm just used to putting work out there and getting feedback. And this is like the complete opposite of that. Like all of my startup MVP DNA, that I've built up just is not comfortable with this. So I'm probably gonna be going in a different route. Now there's, if you don't go the big publisher route, there's a few other routes, depending on what it is that you really want. So the first thing to know is there's small presses, like smaller publishers that aren't the big five, and they're more approachable. A lot of times you can kind of pitch them directly. Um, and they will kind of, you know, do their best to market your book. Um, and if you actually do successfully get picked up by them, you can feel, you know, there's a lot of authors that just feel really good knowing they were published by a third party because they just don't want to get self-published. And there's a lot of stigma around self-publishing, um, you know, because at least previously, you, you know, you pretty much was not very good stuff was self-published. But these days, I, you know, things are changing where you see a lot of really great stuff being self-published for good reason. And you have big, big time authors who now go and launch their own Kickstarters, uh, as a, a recent fantasy author did, you know, and, and make millions by basically self-publishing. But we'll talk about self-publishing in a minute. Um, the... The second thing I was talking about, yeah, self, uh, small presses is basically a way to kind of do a middle ground. Um, and so for a long time, I kind of thought, you know, I'll pitch to small presses. I think that could be a good way, kind of a middle ground between self-publishing. And The problem is a lot of the small presses, when I researched them, the like basically you can get a contract like, if you actually succeed at pitching them. You'll get a contract with them. And basically they'll offer to market the book a little, but then I would like look at their Twitter accounts and like <laughs> just like a few hundred people or, you know, it's not really like they're gonna give you a huge marketing boost. They're gonna market you, but it, you have to think about like, okay, how much are they actually gonna be able to market you versus what you can do yourself. Something to think about. Um, and then a lot of the contracts would be like 80, 20 royalties. So what I mean by this is like, the way that they work with every book sale, every book sale, you get some percentage and they get some percentage. And a lot of them, they would get like 80%. And I would be like, even for a small press? Um, you know, I sort of expect that for the big five. Like, I think big five is probably even more. It's probably like 90 something. I don't know. Um, but that's something to think about is like, well, if every sale I barely get, I get less than a quarter of it. You're not really going to make much. So I guess then the main value would be like, well, I got published by a small press. I feel really good about that. Okay. So it's, it's, I, I respect that as in it's, it is a valuable thing because it, it gives you a sense of validation 
that you know you're not just some ebook that was uploaded to Kindle. Um, you know, there's like not to say that those are good or bad because oh, there's a lot of great stuff that's done that way, but there's also a lot of stuff that isn't that great. And so you kind of have to think about like, do you really want to play that game? Do you want to go and pitch and query and pitch and query and wait for rejections and keep going and going? Maybe you do. And I kind of went back and forth on that a lot until I realized, honestly, what I really was most concerned about with this route was not just the delay and the pitching and the querying, it was, you don't really have much control. Um, like, you know, you kind of send them this manuscript and then they might have some changes they want to make. Maybe they may, maybe they do, maybe they don't. Um, but like for me, what I really care about and what I respect about a lot of books is, you know, the cover design, the texture. Is it a leather cover or like, you know, hardcover, really nice hardcover? How's the typography? What's the like paper quality like? Because, I mean, I care about every word, but I also care about the illustrations. I care about a lot of that stuff. And a lot of times with the small presses, especially like, printing quality and they they can't really afford to go like all out right um and you know it's since the pandemic the printing costs and stuff have kind of gone wild right like everything's just more expensive now so you know you can't really blame them um but that's another thing that what i realized was i don't think i could go this route you know i'm saying it like i've decided but I feel like I'm always in, in multiple minds, like, oh, maybe I should, last minute, just try. I don't know. Um, but, um, but, but yeah, I, I have decided I think I'm going to be going self-publishing. I will be getting some help with the layout and cover design and stuff like that with some, some, someone who's really got a lot of expertise on this, but I'm probably going to go that route. Now, before I talk about self-publishing, which is, I think, the last thing I want to talk about before I end this video... Just a word of caution. There's a thing called Vanity Press or Vanity Publisher. And these are essentially presses that kind of prey on people who really care about getting published. So they will just take any, any manuscript and you have to pay them to publish your book. And they take the majority of royalties so for a lot of people, they're kind of like, oh, cool. Like it'll say it was published by this press. How cool. And then they have to pay like three, $4,000 and give away 80% of royalties. Um, this is kind of, is pretty predatory practices to be completely honest. Um, and actually some of them I looked at and I didn't realize they were vanity presses until I looked closer. Like it looks like it's like a great deal. Um, you know, I mean, there's no such thing as free lunch, right? So they're really not actually checking or looking or, or filtering any of the stuff that's coming in. So the validation isn't really what it's there. It's just some people just really want to pay money to have that on there. And, and maybe you do, um, you know, and, and you can find those to do that. But, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to kind of go the self-publishing route because I'll be able to get a product out. I'll be able to control the quality of it. I'll be able to know how it feels. I'll, I'll still be able to, like with self-publishing, you can still have it go on Amazon. You can use um, these tools like Ingram Spark, and people will still be able to buy the book from all the places they know. You can still have bookstores have your book. You just kind of, maybe you need to contact them or, or you have other marketing ways to get through. Pretty much 99% of all the things that you would expect about how you can buy the book are there. The only difference is, instead of saying like published by this other thing, it's probably going to say published by you know your name or whatever you put in there. It's really not that much of a difference. I mean, it, it, it's just a question of like what's important. A thing to know is if you actually self-publish your book and it, if you self-publish your book and it like does extremely well, let's say it does like it goes viral, it goes in, you know, it's just absolute mega hit, then publishers actually do buy, will go and, and reach out to that, that author and try and, and get a contract. So you can get published traditionally later. It's a good hedge, right? Um, you know, I'm kind of going in as I just want to make something, you know, I'm working really hard on it. I, I think these stories are going to help people. I feel really motivated by by writing them and bringing them 
out to the world and I want people to hold the book. I want to, I care about the physical copy. I want people to hold it and just think, you know, this is nice. Like I think someone put some effort into this. Like it just looks nice. I feel like that's what I want is to make a quality product. And if I do that, I'll feel really proud. I'll feel like I did these stories justice. And that's what matters most to me. So that's kind of how, you know, I convinced myself, like, I think, I think I'm going to go down this, this self-publishing route. Um, and, you know, there's still a lot to figure out. Like you still, you know, for example, one of the big questions that I'm, and I'll probably end with this is, well, you know, you also will do all the marketing in addition to all the design and all that stuff. Um, and you can get some help and you can pay people for this, but basically you're going to do all the marketing. The thing to note though, is even with other presses that publish you, you still end up doing the majority of the marketing. Like a lot of the big presses only take on authors that already have a following, which is kind of strange. You like, I feel like you would think the purpose of them is to do the marketing, <laughs> but no, that's not really how it works. They're kind of, they're kind of like they put in marketing and then if the marketing goes well, they put in more money into it. But if not, that's it. You're on your own. So what I have to think about is like, do I want to have a Kickstarter? And, or do like a pre-order campaign to like build up. Um, I've thought about writing shorter fables and making like a newsletter of a paid newsletter of fables like every week. And then that would sort of slowly build up and find more audience who are interested in these fables. And then if they're interested, they could get the book. That's another way to market. So there's lots of things like that that I need to look into, but um, I don't know. There's lots of room for me to do some of this stuff that I think is fun. Like I have fun trying things out and putting things out there and getting feedback. That's fun. Um, a lot of the other stuff like querying and all, it just doesn't seem as fun. I don't know. So if, if it's something that you're, you're not like doing because it's like your job, I think, think about what are you actually going to have fun doing? Um, and are you willing to do that for like months and months and months and months? Right. Cause this is a long game. I mean, I, I started this like March, 2021. It's m end of May now, 2022. I haven't really worked. I don't think I've worked on a personal project at this scale before. Um, and the thing that has gotten me going, you know, and kept me going is just thinking about this book at the end, like this thing that's going to exist. And, and that's partly why I really want to control that. Like, imagine you go through all this and then you're just spending it, lose all your energy, putting it out there, trying to get it published. You, you, you know yourself best. So, um, I hope this was helpful. Drop some questions in the comments. Um, I'm still working on it. I'm really excited for you to see it when it's ready. And I'll keep you updated on, on some of the other learnings as I go along. But um, thanks for watching. And like I said, if you have that idea for that book, give it a shot. Just start writing it. Start playing with it. See how it feels. You never know. You might draft something. Um, six months might go by quick. Good luck if that's something you're about to embark on or are working on. And um, I'll see you next time.